This is Michael White from Ossetia Pasteur. I'm going to tell you about our work on Tofenequin for Plasmodium vivax control and elimination, a modeling case study of Brazil. This is a collaboration between the Malaria Parasites and Host Unit in Ossetia Pasteur and our colleagues in Fio Cruz and Rio de Janeiro and the Foundation of Tropical Medicine in Manaus. This work was uh, funded by Medicines for Malaria Venture. The real star of the work is Nariman Nakab, who implemented all of the following analyses. The project is focused on Vivax relapses and how to treat them. The Vivax infection begins with a bite from a mosquito, which inoculates sporozoids into the skin, which travel to the liver. Some of these undergo development immediately to give rise to a primary blood stage infection. And this is the parallel for falciparum, one mosquito blood, one blood stage infection. For Vivax, we also have parasites called hypnozoids, which lie dormant in the liver for weeks, months, or years before relapsing to cause new blood stage infections. And this is the parallel for Vivax, one mosquito bite, many blood stage infections. When modeling Vivax, it's tempting to think that it's just like falciparum with the addition of relapses. But the reality is more complex because Vivax is a complex parasite. When thinking about the complexity of Vivax, I like to think of it as an onion. So when we peel away the first layer of complexity, we see the issue of relapses. Peeling away another layer, we have the problem of hypnozoids and how to treat them with the only available drugs, primaquin or tofenequin. However, peeling away another level, we have the challenge of G6PD deficiency, an inherited blood disorder. Now, if we give primaquin to a G6PD deficient individual, they may have a severe hemolytic event. Another layer is X linkage of G6 deficiency, so it manifests differently in men and women. We also have age and pregnancy restrictions, low duty 6 metabolization, and other factors that we haven't even thought about. Now, if we had a single dose radical cure with no restrictions, we wouldn't have to worry about any of this complexity. But unfortunately, we don't. We have primaquin and tofenequin, so we need to deal with this complexity and models can provide a good framework to handle all of these different factors. So I'm going to turn to our example of case management in Brazil. So currently for symptomatic Vivax, it's three days of chloroquine and a seven day regimen of low dose primaquine. Um, so we're going to describe the primaquine treatment pathway. So the process begins with a symptomatic case of Vivax searching treatment in a healthcare facility. Uh, cases are first sorted by age, gender, and pregnancy status. We have data on all of this from across Brazil from the CVEP database, which provides data on all cases of malaria in Brazil since 2005. Depending on these factors, um, individuals are prescribed either chloroquine or chloroquine plus primaquine. When people are prescribed primaquine, we know that there is not full adherence to the seven-day regimen. From a systematic review of the literature, we estimated that only 67% of individuals take the full course. When people do take a full course, we know that there's a problem with low CYP2D6 metabolization, which means that drugs will not work in some individuals. From a systematic review, we estimate that 8% of the Brazilian population have this particular phenotype. At the end of this treatment pathway, there are a number of routes by which individuals can be effectively treated or not. Even if people receive the full primaquin course, we know that it's not a fully efficacious regime. We estimate that, 70, that this regimen has 71% efficacy. Furthermore, in Brazil, there is currently no G6PD testing required, and this is in line with the WHO recommendation. It is known that in some G6PD individuals, Primaquin can trigger hemolysis in Brazil. Um, so next we will consider estimating the effective hypnozoic clearance with the current treatment in Brazil. And here I'll consider two case studies, a high transmission municipality in Amazonas state and a medium transmission municipality in Pará state. Firstly, looking at the high transmission setting of São Gabriel de Cachoeira, here we see the age and gender distribution of cases of Vivax in 2018. Men in blue, women in green. And based on this distribution, we can estimate the effective levels of treatment. Doing this for all cases, we can generate the tree map as shown here. This square represents 100% of cases. In purple are the individuals that were effectively treated. 
can dark blue those that were not effectively treated due to lack of primaquine efficacy. In green, individuals that failed to adhere, and in light blue, individuals that were not eligible for primaquine. And in total, we estimate that 42% of cases here were effectively treated. Next, turning to our medium transmission setting in Para, looking at the age and gender distribution of cases, we see very few cases in children and many cases in adult men of working age. So if we apply the same method of the treatment pathway, make a tree map, we can estimate the effect of treatment. Here we will see that there are many more cases in men. And again, we can estimate that only 40% of cases are estimated to receive effective primitive treatment. And we can do this analysis for every municipality in Brazil. And in total, we estimate that only 43% of cases in, in 2018 were effectively treated with radical cure. Um, next, we can turn to the proposed new Vivax radical cure in Brazil, incorporating Tefenequin. It's important to note that Tefenequin will not fully replace Primaquin, and that individuals who are not eligible for Tefenequin will still receive Primaquin. Mandatory G6PD testing will also be required. Um, Tefenequin was approved for treating malaria cases in Brazil in 2019 in adults, that is, people greater than 16 years of age. From phase three clinical trial data in Brazil, Tefenequin showed very similar efficacy to Primaquin when there was full adherence. Now, G6PD testing will be mandatory. Individuals with G6PD activity less than 30% will receive chloroquine only. Individuals with greater than 30% activity will be eligible for Primaquin, and only individuals with greater than 70% activity will be eligible for Tefenequin. Also, we assume that there's no impact of low CYP2D6 metabolization on Tefenequin efficacy. Quite a notable assumption. And we can put this all together to make a treatment pathway for Tefenequin. It's notably more complex because of the extra treatments and testing required. I'm not going to step through all of this in detail, but it's very similar to the previous treatment pathway that we saw. Turning back to our high transmission setting of Sao Gabriel de Cachoeira, for Primaquin, we saw that 42% of individuals were effectively treated. And now for Tefenequin, we can est estimate who receives effective treatment. And here in the teal region, we see that many more individuals are receiving treatment. And this is because of the uh, good to perfect adherence of Tefenequin. So that in total, we estimate that 64% of cases are effectively treated an increase of 22%. Next, looking at our other example in Itaituba municipality, we estimate that uh, the introduction of Fenequin would again lead to substantial increases in the proportion effectively treated. And again, we can do this for every municipality in Brazil, so that in total we estimated that the introduction of Fenequin into case management would lead to 58% of cases being effectively treated. And this is a 15.6% additional increases in the cases that could be treated. And this is notably an effect that's present on the individual level. So this benefits the individuals that are treated. But there will also be a community level effect because these people won't transmit onwards. In order to estimate the community level benefit, we used a previously published mathematical model of Vivax transmission and incorporated our primitive defenequin treatment pathways as well as models for G6PD activity and testing. Again, looking at our high transmission setting of Sao Gabriel, Sao Gabriel de Cachoeira, we can see that if we introduce defenequin into case management in 2021, five years after introduction, we would estimate a 13% reduction in community level transmission. If we implemented a higher dose to Fenequin regimen with higher efficacy of 90%, this would give a bigger reduction of 16%. But big, bigger reductions would happen only if we can expand to Fenequin into younger age ranges to treat all those cases in children. Um, notably, and this is a high transmission setting, so there was quite a small estimated effect size, but this translates to a large number of averted cases. Notably, in this setting, transmission is driven by asymptomatic infections, which are happening out in the community, uh, and they don't come and seek treatment in the healthcare system. 
So next we can turn to our other transmission setting of the moderate transmission setting in Para. And here, if we introduce the in 2021, after five years, we have an estimated effect size of the fenequin of 39%, much more substantial. And here we can see that higher dose to fenequin would, of course, give a greater effect size. And in this particular setting, expanding into children isn't going to be as effective because of the high proportion of cases that are in adults. However, even with this very big effect, it's, we predict that it's still not enough to eliminate vivax. And in cases where there's a high proportion of cases in adult males, uh, we would predict that Tefenequin will have a greater effect size. So I'm going to finish by summing up what we expect to see five years after the introduction of Tefenequin. In Brazil, we estimate that this would increase the proportion of effective radical cure from 43% to 58%. In total, we expect that this would lead to the 300,000 cases averted in the first five years. This would need a lot of G6PD tests. We estimate 880,000 G6PD tests would be needed. Um, if we can introduce high efficacy to fenicillin, either by higher dose to make it higher efficacy, or and also give to fenicillin to the younger age group in children, then we can increase the proportion receiving radical cure to 81% which could lead to half a million averted cases. And finally, as the number of cases averted increases, this will bring down transmission, and the number of doses and G6PD tests will reduce, which can potentially contribute to the cost effectiveness of this regimen. So I'll finish by thanking you and taking any questions.